Welcome back to the Teach Me CQL series. This series is presented by the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services, or CMS. It is intended to support healthcare quality leaders, health IT vendors, and measure developers explore the use of clinical quality language, or CQL. Please bookmark this link to the eCQI Resource Center for easy access. Today's session will cover fluent functions in CQL. As we know from previous sessions, functions are a key feature in CQL that are named expressions that can take a number of arguments, each of which has a name and a declared type. We spoke about a specific function, the normalized interval function, during our first installment of the Teach Me CQL series. Fluent functions in CQL were introduced in version 1.5 and provide some features that make them more appealing to use. The name fluent function brings up images of languages being spoken, which is not too far off from what fluent functions aim to accomplish. Fluent functions are called using more concise syntax that simplifies code and enhances readability. Although fluent functions are not currently used within the CMS reporting program eCQMs, the move to Firebase measures will see the incorporation of their use. Let's dive into how you can write fluent functions in CQL. Fluent function is expressed using the define keyword, followed by the fluent keyword, and then the function name. For example, in the QI Core common library in MADI, there is a fluent function length in days. In this example, Length in days is a fluent function that calculates the difference in calendar days between the start and end of the given interval. Unlike non-fluent functions, fluent functions do not require the use of the library name when invoking a fluent function defined in another library. You can use them seamlessly across different declared libraries. Once you have defined a fluent function, you will want to apply it to your measure. To use a fluent function, you can prepend the function name with a dot after the source or the object that you're operating on. And as I mentioned before, you don't need to state which library the fluent function is in. Take this example for instance. Without the use of a fluent function, the example would be encounter performed non-elective inpatient encounter where global.length and days less than or equal to 120. Where we see the function at the beginning of the statement and using the term global to indicate that it is being called from the global library. Now let's see how that's written using fluent syntax. Encounter, non-elective inpatient encounter, where non-elective encounter dot period dot length and days is less than or equal to 120. We can see that the fluent function is at the end of the non-elective encounter dot period string. We know that it is a fluent function because it has the parenthetical at the end. Care should be taken in naming fluent functions, like any other definition in CQL, to make sure that the logic you are placing behind the name is accurate and intuitive to the name given. For example, the isActive function is shown here. Not only will this function return conditions with a clinical status of active, it will also return those with a status of recurrence and relapse. Fluent functions can be defined on any type, including lists. For example, a different function titled simply active, shown here, will return a list of conditions with any of the statuses I mentioned before. Note that this function is decidedly different than the previous function. First, the name is different. We are missing the is, but also the argument going into the function is accepting lists. With this function, we can operate on a list of conditions. So if I have a definition of active conditions, as shown here, I can add the active fluent function to get a list of the active conditions. Fluent functions can also be defined on choice types. A reminder from our previous session that choice types are a feature of CQL that are a type that is defined by a list of component types. Let's look at an example 
of this in action. The function to interval can take several choice types and convert to an interval. In the first few lines, we see that the function can take the type date time and create an interval with a start and end point that equal the date time. Thanks for joining us on this installment of Teach Me CQL. We hope these sessions are informative. Be sure to check out our other sessions on the eCQI Resource Center CQL Education page. Thank you.